Hello, welcome back to the Healthy GSO podcast. This is your host, Dr. Aaron LeBauer, and today my special guest is Ann Hewitt. Ann is a uh, mother and a um, uh, fitness enthusiast, but really what Ann does is she is a beauty counter um, rep or expert, but she helps people um, with their body, their skin, their mind, and help um, them live a more healthy, happier life. And so I wanted to bring her on the show to talk about what she's doing because I don't exactly know, but I know it's something really awesome. So, uh, and welcome to the show. Appreciate you spending the time here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So here, this is what you said in your like bio is like your mission is to guide women and men in creating individualized, clean beauty rituals that allow their inner beauty to shine. That was really awesome. But I, I didn't, it wasn't going to like roll right off my tongue, but can you explain a little bit about like, what does that mean? And why is that so important to you? Well, I definitely believe, as I know you and Andra do, in inner wellness and just recognizing our value and our worth. And so I always want that to underscore my job. But mm -hmm. on the outside, it looks like I am a beauty consultant and team leader, but I really do want all of my interactions with my clients and prospects to be one that really sees people's inner beauty yeah. and help them pick out products that make them feel beautiful on the outside while recognizing that inner beauty. Well, that's awesome. Where did that like come from? Or was there some, uh, like, um, was there, was there something that happened? You were like, Hey, you know what? Like, did you read something? Do you have a personal experience where you're like, I need to look into, um, something new or something different? Well, um, you mean as far as my job goes? Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, we don't have to go back to like, you know, when you were 20, like, did you think you would be <laughs> here? But like, was there something that got you into um, using more natural beauty products and recommending them to other people? Was there some like life event or story? Or was it just, you know, like, hey, a friend recommended and I liked it? Great question. I'm a CPA by training, speaking mm -hmm. um, of 20 years ago. And so I've realized that I am real into details. And so mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I have recognized as a similarity between what I was trained for and what I'm now doing. Yeah. But um, my sister, I was ho I homeschooled my three kids. One's graduated now. And six and a half years ago, my sister actually put me on to this clean beauty journey. And I watched a couple of videos. And at the time I had... I'd been eating healthy. I'd created as clean of an external environment for my kids as I could. And it had never occurred to me to consider what I was putting on our skin. And I've always thought of my, I won't go too down into this because I know we'll cover it later, but um, my mom had had breast cancer uh, about a year and a half before I heard about the importance of paying attention to what was in my ingredients. And I'd lost two friends, young friends to cancer. And so it was just um, a missing piece of the puzzle that I didn't realize, I didn't even know was missing. Um, and so started that journey six and a half years ago and I've learned a lot. I still have a lot more to learn, yeah. um, but it's been fun just learning as I've gone along. That's great. Is, um, is this something like, so going from CPA to doing this, was this something that you, is this something that just fits better with your lifestyle or just was that something you know, crunching numbers, something that just you didn't want to do. <laughs> That's another great question. Um, I do. I love the study of it. The application of it got a little tedious some days. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time with my computer. And so mm -hmm. I, I realized that I really needed more interpersonal connection. And I also recognized that I was not in command of my own schedule. Mm -hmm. So once my children came along, I was in tax and so I knew there were no extensions to deadline to final <laughs> deadlines and so there was no wiggle room and I just right. didn't want to try to balance parenting with working um, in that field anymore and so I actually took about a nine year hiatus between working and starting up this job um, with Beauty Counter and it's been wonderful because I get to work from home and mm -hmm. set my own schedule if I need to take a day off I can take a day off. Um, you know, if I need to take two weeks off, I can, and that has been really a huge blessing. Wow. That's great. Is that, is that why you started with beauty counter or for the flexible schedule or is there something else? I really was mad actually, when mm -hmm. I started learning about the clean beauty industry and kind of the, some of the dirt that was going on, some of the secrets yeah. in the beauty industry. And 
I was, I had been well educated. I have a graduate degree. I was already into health and fitness and was shocked by mm -hmm. what I learned. And I felt a responsibility to share what I had learned with other people, yeah. much as I'm sure you do. Right. What, what was the one thing that you learned that like surprised you or shocked you? Oh gosh, the one thing. Um, I would say probably the biggest thing mm -hmm. of all that I have learned that shocks me is that our country has, has eliminated only 30 ingredients from the personal care industry. So there are mm -hmm. 80,000 chemicals used in commerce today and only 30 are forbidden from being used in skincare. And there are a lot of ingredients that are used in not just skincare, but personal care products, right. deodorant, lotion, shampoo, all that. Wow. Well, I know from personal experience that you washed my hands a bunch. My hands, especially in the winter, get dry and cracked. And a few years ago, um, I even went to the dermatologist and said, oh, we'll use this cream with a steroid in it and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? That just doesn't seem right. And I started doing some research and saw, found out that it's the sodium lauryl sulfate that's mm -hmm. in the soap that is a, um, it's a sudsing agent, but it's mm -hmm. also used for testing where they'll put that on the animal and then see how it irritates the skin and then use the lotion to see how it you know see does it not you like how does it heal the irritation it's like it's a known skin irritant mm -hmm. it's in soap mm -hmm. and like so it's so it's really difficult for me to find soaps that don't have it in it because it'll just dry and crack up my skin but i was like well why didn't the dermatologist ever say well maybe you shouldn't use um soap with sodium yeah. sulfate in it and i know andra has toothpaste without it in it Mm -hmm. because that gives her, when she does that gives her like a cold sore in her mouth but when huh. she has toothpaste without that ingredient in it it's not there's no problems hmm. isn't that kind of crazy <laughs> it is and this is an aside but an interesting point that you made about the animals what's it's i've am sad for the animals but i'm also really sad for humans because right. we're being test cases um mm -hmm. you know with all these ingredients that are being allowed in products yeah What's the number one misconception um, people have about um, like the products they put on their skin or they use for beauty or for even what you do with beauty counter? Like what do people think, like what are people missing or not misunderstanding? Well, for me, I was just missing the information. I didn't mm -hmm. realize that I just, ha it didn't, I didn't even have a grid for knowing that there was anything I needed to be paying attention to. Yeah. And so I think that's a huge misconception um, or just lack of awareness. And then I think also just not appreciating the um, porosity, I guess, of our skin. Mm -hmm. I always thought until I started on this journey that my skin was a shield and I didn't realize that it was actually allowing things in. I mean, and again, I was an educated person and didn't really right. have that understanding. And, um, and so I think, I think soon after I started on this journey, someone pointed out to me that again, medical professionals will prescribe patches for smoking, birth control, whatever. And, you know, if you do your research, you discover that it's a little two inch square that you put on your skin and it changes all the hormones. And in the case of birth control, like the most elemental function of a woman's body can mm -hmm. get changed from a little two inch square. Right. Um, and that kind of freaked me out. So I think just an awareness of needing to pay attention to what's in ingredient products, as well as an understanding that this really does get into our systems. Mm -hmm. I missed both of those. Right. Wow. Uh, what's the, um, probably the, the number one product or um, item that most people uh, are using that they don't know is easily replaceable, something that's less harmful or toxic or irritating? I think for the biggest bang for your buck, that mm -hmm. sunscreen and body mm -hmm. lotion are two products that you kind of apply in the summer, at least head to toe in the winter body lotion, summer yeah. sunscreen and body lotion. And so I think those two things are pretty quick switches. And of course we have lots of other products mm. that can be switched, but those are head to toe things that don't get rinsed off. Right. It's funny that you say uh, sunscreen. So I remember it was well before I had kids. So it was probably 12 years ago. And I was like, Oh, look at all the chemicals in the sunscreen. All right, let me go get some like hippie natural sunscreen. So mm. I got the stuff and I, 
put it all over myself and we're going out for a walk and I was, it was like one of those hot summer days in North Carolina. It was like 98% humidity <laughs> and 98 degrees. And I felt like I, my skin was suffocating. Like after mm. two blocks, I had to go home. And it was, I think it was basically like all zinc, right? And it was like, mm -hmm. I'm just drowning in it. And I just felt like suffocating and that just gave me a bad flavor. But that's been 12, <laughs> it's been 12 years. And um, we've found some different sunscreens over the years, but well, one being redheaded, I have to wear it to a lot mm -hmm. of people really need it now. Is there a, um, a favorite sunscreen that you recommend or use yourself? I love the beauty counter sunscreen. Mm -hmm. It goes on um, really smoothly and not, it doesn't have that thick zinc back in the old days right. kind of formulation anymore it blends in really nicely and we've got one for body and one for faces oh, oh that's so awesome I love those. yeah and um well speaking of that is there something that you do on a regular basis like a like maybe talk us through like what's your um health or beauty routine or is there something you do that you know people listening might be like oh it's that simple or it's that easy or wow that sounds kind of, because it sounds really intimidating you're like oh, i gotta go read a bunch of labels and a bunch of ingredients mm. i don't understand like what's the what's like the simple thing that you do on a regular basis um so that other people can really understand like uh what it kind of looks like or would look like to you know kind of make small changes but important changes yeah i mean like we said lotion and sunscreen are two big changes mm -hmm. that you can make um, and then there's a great tool that I don't think you and I even talked about. I'm sure you know about it, but I didn't mention it earlier, is the EWG Skin Deep Database. Mm. So for those of you that have heard of the Dirty Dozen, I find that a lot of people are familiar with the Dirty Dozen list of um, produce that they should eat organic. Right. That same organization has the Skin Deep Database, which you can search for safer products. And it's a pretty robust database. Mm -hmm. um, it's exciting. Beauty Counter has a lot of EWG verified products on that list, but there are lots of other um, options as well. Do so people, that, go ahead. People go to like, is it just EWG.com or is it? You know? I think it's EWG.org slash skin deep. Okay. Oh yeah. Let me see. I can look it up while we're recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. EWG dot. Yeah, that's it. Dot org. I've been there a couple times. Yeah, that's skin deep. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> awesome. Great. Um, is there any, like, besides this, or like, what else do you do for like fitness and health? Are you, do you do exercise regularly, meditate, gym, something else? Um, I journal, I try to journal daily, mm -hmm. which has been a practice I've done my whole life, but I've been really during this pandemic trying to be more consistent about it. And it's been wonderful just kind of having a little counseling session with myself to get all my thoughts out and get my head straight and think right. Um, and then just trying to set boundaries on my work days. That's been really helpful and important. Um, and staying active and eating well. We have definitely have <laughs> gotten off the rails a little bit with that, but we're trying to tighten things back up the last few weeks around here. Right. Awesome. What, um, what would you say uh, to someone who like is interested or what are your like kind of top three to five recommendations to someone who's interested. So we've got like replace uh, like sunscreen and skin lotion, mm -hmm. but is there anything else that I guess maybe three to five recommendations for things to look out for and what your what's in your current cabinet or in, in your bag or when you go to the store, is there something you can um, share with us so that people know what to look for? Like what are some of these ingredients that they you know really should be looking out for? Yeah, I've got um, an, a tool called the Never List that is mm -hmm. a visual. You, there's also a website where you can look it up um, of ingredients that are good ones to eliminate, but there are really four that kind of bubble up that I try to avoid. One of them, well, some of them are harder than others mm -hmm. on that big list, but parabens is a big one. That is in lotion, sunscreens, it's a, it's a preservative and it actually mimics estrogen okay. and it is found in breast cancer tissue and just something that we should all stay away from. Uh, the second one is phthalates, which is a hormone disruptor mm -hmm. and it's a plasticizer. So it helps extend the um, texture and the scent of things. A third one to look out for is fragrance. That's the one that's hard for a lot of people because a lot of people love their scented candles, their scented lotions and bath products and everything. But fragrance is actually an industry term 
that can be used to hide ingredients that we want to avoid. Companies don't have to report the ingredients that are included in their fragrance. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one. And then oxybenzone is in sunscreen. So look for a sunscreen that's got a, a mineral-based formula like mm -hmm. zinc or titanium dioxide rather than oxybenzone. Right. Is the, um, it, it's kind of like with sugar, has got like, there's 30 different terms for sugar. Right. right. That's definitely the case with parabens. Yeah. There yeah. are like four different forms of it. Right. Right. Wow. And are there any brands uh, people can just look out for that they can trust without having to like remember all the big words? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are. Beauty Counter obviously is what I'm partial to. Um, we actually have 14, 1800 ingredients that are eliminated from our formulas. So we mm -hmm. take that 30 and toss those in and then add almost 2000 more on top. Yeah. Um, then there are lots of other brands and I actually created a little cheat sheet for your listeners and watchers, okay. viewers um, of some of the products that I use in addition to Beauty Counter. Mm -hmm. And then there's another group, we haven't even talked about this called the Counter Coalition. It's a several probably 20 um, different brands that have actually decided to work with Beauty Counter in uh, the federal government to try to increase awareness and change laws so that products in retail aren't allowed to use these ingredients because back to what we were talking about earlier about awareness, people that never run into this information have no idea when they go to CVS or the dermatologist or where Belks, wherever they are, they aren't aware that they need to read their labels. And so if we can elevate the whole industry standards using only safe ingredients mm -hmm. um, will be in a much better place. And so lots of these companies have joined Beauty Counter in that work. So I can share that list with you as well. Okay. Um, that's awesome. And that's the one that we set up the healthygso.com forward slash Ann. That's the, that they're kind of the, two lists. But okay. Yeah. So the Ann's Clean Beauty Favorites is that one, right? Yes. So, yep. so if you're, we'll put in the show notes, it's healthygso.com forward slash A-N-N-E. Um, because that was an awesome resource that uh, yeah. you shared with me before the show. Um, and is there anything else that you think would be helpful for our listeners to know, or did I ask you all the questions? Um, I guess if you're considering just as far as a great facial skincare routine, we didn't really talk about that. If you're looking for results with breakouts or with um, helping rejuvenate your skin, one of the things that I would recommend as you're evaluating the ingredients in your products is also making sure if you're really looking for results that you've got four steps in your skincare routine, that you've got a cleanser, a toner, a serum, and a moisturizer. Um, so just as far as a great skincare routine, those are wonderful steps to incorporate. And so I can help, of course, if anybody is listening and wants assistance kind of figuring out. But I think sometimes when you walk into the store, it's overwhelming trying to figure out when you see all the different categories of skincare, right. trying to figure out what you need to fill those spots can be helpful. Right, because our skin is also a reflection of what's on the inside mm -hmm. and what we put on it. But it's yes. like, so our foods, uh, sugars, oils, like chocolate, they can impact breakouts, but it's also mm -hmm. probably the materials we put on top and pores get clogged or irritated and it's just like a combination yeah right yeah but a good well so is it just a good routine that helps i mean is there like a you know key other key factor or is it you know can you really you know change things with a good um, skin routine you know if you're having skin problems yes i mean I'm, I'm not sure if this is what you're getting at but certainly doing a skin routine twice a day can mm -hmm. be really helpful being consistent with that and then like you said i think dairy um can impact breakouts and there are lots of things that we can ingest that right. like you said show up on our skin yeah well, um awesome and and for the listeners one of the things i uh, i learned in pt school that i thought was really interesting is that our skin is on the outside but it's the same type of cell as the uh inside of our body, the intestinal tract. And, um, and even uh, technically our, our mouth to our intestinal tract, to our colon, to the exit, that's outside of our body. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, so then that's how we absorb. So not when we don't only absorb food, nutrients and chemicals and minerals from the inside, we absorb it from the outside as well. Hmm. So, yeah. and, our, and our body starts to reflect all the things that we bathe ourselves in on mm -hmm. a day-to-day basis. 
Um, and uh, this has been really helpful and insightful for me. If someone wants to connect with you or get in touch with you, is there a best place, um, whether it's a website, social media, for them to find you and connect? I am happy. To, I'd love for y'all to come visit my Instagram account. It's annhewitt.betterbeauty. And it's an interesting spelling, A-N-N-E-H-U-I-T-T -T dot betterbeauty. Um, and then I am Ann Hewitt on Facebook, active mm -hmm. on both platforms. And then you're also welcome to email me at hello at annhewitt.com. Um, and then my shopping website is beautycounter.com slash Ann Hewitt. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to put all those uh, links in the show notes. And, um, and I really appreciate you being here today. This is really helpful. And if you guys um, have questions for Anne or want to learn more, um, go check out her links, follow her on Instagram. And um, we are going to uh, I will put everything together for you. And uh, I think that's it. Um, and thank you so much. This has been great. I like want to stay on here a lot longer and ask you more questions. Um, but, uh, you know, for the, you know, time for the podcast, we're going to move on, but, um, I look forward to, uh, you know, continue to follow you on Instagram and Facebook myself, because some of the posts and things you share are really inspiring and helpful for me, but also people I know. So thank you. And this is Dr. LeBauer with the healthy GSO podcast. Go, um, follow Ann. And uh, if you got anything from the show, I'd appreciate you guys, uh, you know, message us on Instagram, do a little Instagram story if you know what I'm talking about. Because if you're um, sometimes when you're Gen X and older, you're like, what's the Instagram? Um, go find us on Facebook and um, come check out the website, healthygso.com, where we'll have all the links and information about Ann and all the other guests. And we'll see you guys on the next show. Thank you so much. <laughs>